my name is Rachel and welcome to day 17 of Vlogmas. As you may have noticed, I am back in England. I literally just landed a few hours ago, so this is not going to be a long video. Um, but I wanted to talk today because I finished reading Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire on the plane and I just wanted to talk about it a little bit. So obviously this is a reread, but I haven't reread the Goblet of Fire very much because I always used to reread the other ones and although I've always liked this one and I've always thought of the film of this as being one of my favourite films just because it's a very cinematic with the uh, Triwizard Tournament and stuff however I yeah I always just pass over it when I'm reading because I love five six and seven they are my favourites I absolutely adore them and then I enjoy one two and three a lot because they're the, like the starting up a bit but yeah this and number three a little bit are the ones that I've reread the least and I just have no idea why that is because I enjoyed this so much on reread it's been fantastic and I just uh, loved it so I just thought I'd share a little list with you of things that I thought while I was reading it I really enjoyed the timings of the series so obviously the timing of any big event always happening at the end of the year isn't perfect and is very much contrived however in terms of Voldemort's actual attacks I really enjoy the way they do them because obviously we have Voldemort attacking the first book but then in the second book it's nothing really to do with Voldemort in terms of him currently at that time it's just Lucius Malfoy did that with the diary and an older version of Voldemort came out in the Horcrux but it wasn't currently Voldemort and then Voldemort didn't really know about it because he didn't really know the diary had been destroyed for a while so I find it quite cool that you know he doesn't really attack in the second one and then he doesn't really attack in the second one in terms of his current self and then in the third one obviously it's not a Voldemort attack that is the like antagonist in that one either so we go from an attack on the first one where he was destroyed by Harry's touch to the fourth one him finally coming back and I think it's just a really good timing that it took him like three years to it's really good timing that it took him three years to get himself back to a point where he could attack again because that I feel like that's something that a lot of series and things like that wouldn't put in that much time it would just be oh the next book they'll manage to get back and fight but he had a lot of time to recuperate and to build himself back up and I think that's really cool. Then there's some things that I forgot. So the first thing that I forgot is how big a, well not a massive role, but the role that Sirius plays in the Goblet of Fire. So in the film, Sirius kind of just dissolves and isn't there anymore. He appears in the fire a few times to talk to Harry. I think he writes him a letter or two. But he's not actually there, he's not present. And obviously he's so present in the third one with everything that's going on and he's so present in the fifth one that it always feels a bit weird that he's not as present in the fourth one and it's just that I just hadn't read it in ages. He is actually really present and as Harry gets into more and more danger, Sirius makes sure he is more and more available to Harry to the point where he actually starts living at Hogwarts. And I really, really enjoyed that and I can't believe that's something I forgot but it was really nice to reread and kind of see Sirius becoming more and more a part of that story because it just made it more believable and more understanding that Harry would be so sad when he died I mean I know we know he's the last connection Harry has to his family so obviously he will be sad but we see a lot more of um Sirius re we see a lot more of Sirius really caring about Harry and his welfare and obviously Harry's not had that before and so I think that ties into how upset he is about his death and so yeah it was really cool to see that and I was annoyed that I'd forgot it actually. One thing I do I did always remember that they missed out of the books is Spew and Hermione's like drive to save house elves from um slave labour which has always just been one of the funniest things and I always used to hate that they cut that out of the films. However, I did forget, I remembered Winky and I remembered Winky being a bit of a drunk and all the other house elves kind of being like, oh, Bobby's not a proper house elf, you know, he wants to get paid, we should not get paid and all this stuff. And, but obviously through not having Spew, 
and Winky are part of this story, what we also miss. So what we also miss is the history behind Winky and her history with the Crouch family and how she was their house elf. And that ties in so well to the Crouch story and the story of how Barty Crouch Jr. got out of Azkaban and became free is actually phenomenal. And I feel like it's subpar in the film. It's not a very good explanation. And in the book, there's so there's such an interesting story in the way that the ill mother convinces him to get him out and st- all this stuff. It's just so cool. And it was really nice to read it. And I can't believe that I had forgotten that. And it's just, ah. Oh. Like, that was such a cool element of the story that I just really enjoyed rereading. And then the last thing was just a little thing. <laughs> and I forgot what happened to Rita Skeeter at the end of the Goblet of Fire. So, um, Rita Skeeter has basically been getting in to speak to everyone by being an unregistered animagus and turning into a little beetle and either hanging out in rooms and listening into what people are saying or, like with the Slytherins, the Slytherins didn't care. They would just hold her in the hand and chat to her and tell her what was going on because they didn't care if she was uh, illegally there. And so Hermione figures this out and then at the end she gets this jar out with a beetle in and obviously tells the guys like this is Rita Skeeter and she's like I'm taking her back to London she can't get out of this thing and it's just such a good ending and obviously she's been so horrible to Hermione throughout the year and so horrible to just Harry and ev- just everyone in general um, that it was just so nice to see her get a comeuppance and I just I'd completely forgotten that that happened. In terms of my other rereads I only really have uh, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban this is the new illustrated edition that I'm hoping to get to while I am home I've not had a look for it yet I tried to not have a look for it so that I've like saved it for when I read it for the first time but <clears throat> I need to read it soon because I really just want to look at it um, but yeah that is the end of Vlogmas Day 17 thank you very much for watching and I will see you tomorrow bye